All right, so we're checking out this uh, new RC car that just came in. It's called Real Racer, and it is a, an FPV racing car with, like, I guess, like a, a smartphone app. So it's kind of like digital HD um, RC racing. And yeah, this is kind of new. I've never seen anything like this before. It's from a company called Cobotics. They sent along some extra colored. Uh, car body shells here we got some white blue black and i think the one here is red so let's get everything out of the box and see what we got okay so got everything out of the boxes and packaging so didn't want to show you me unwrapping a bunch of plastic but here's the red version of the body shell nice and glossy uh, yeah, a little bit of some shocks here on the car. This is a different kind of RC car. I've never seen anything like this before. Here's the bottom. And you got some warnings here. QR code, so you need a Real Racer app. So this uh, reminds me a lot of the sort of the toy drones that you that fly with those smartphone apps. I imagine this is probably using some sort of Wi-Fi uh, video back to a smartphone. And I think um, maybe a screwdriver here. I think maybe some batteries going there. I don't know what to find out here. But yeah, it looks pretty nice. You got a little FPV camera right here. Looks like a, I don't know, a pretty wide angle lens, it looks like. And see, we got some instructions here. And I probably ought to look these over, but this is everything that comes with it. Got some, got a headset or goggles. And then. Uh, we have the rechargeable battery packs. So that's probably what the screwdriver is for to, to take that out so you can charge it up and you get a charger. Controller, of course, and it comes disassembled in the box. Uh, not a big deal. Just stick this on here and you got your traditional controls. You got your steering dual rates, steering trim, throttle dual rates. And you have uh, looks like a photo button here and a video button here. So definitely... Give me that toy drone vibes. You got an auxiliary button here. This on off switch here. There is a button here that I think releases this battery tray. Yeah, it looks like it uses four AAA batteries. Get a screwdriver for releasing the rechargeable battery in the car. And this is the USB charger that charges the battery. A little lens cloth for the goggles. And this is what the headset looks like. So standard, it's got three straps for your head. Looks like it's got two lenses here and you got some lens protection here. So this is this reminds me a lot of that uh, drone mask. An OK button over here, interesting. What does this do? Okay, okay you got some you got a dial here and this uh, okay, this adjusts the focus, it looks like. Yeah. So you can use this to adjust the focus. The phone goes in, in the in the, top, uh, in the front here. So there's a, a button here. There's a dial here. Okay, that adjusts, that's another focus adjustment here. So the phone goes in there. It looks like this is as far as it opens. And you got those lenses. And... Let's see what this does here. This is, uh, yeah, the top dial adjusts the the IPD or the the pupil distance, so you can adjust that. And then these dials on the side adjust the focus frontwards and backwards, so you can look at the screen. But looks pretty nice, pretty nice, nice soft touch leather here. So obviously put your phone in here. Uh, don't want you to get the app and drive it FPV. So that's gonna be pretty cool. Here's um, one of the shells. Here's the silver one. It's not, not as glossy as the red. And some screws there to install it. I mean, it's a fairly durable feeling shell. Uh, not flimsy. There's the black one. And then you have a white one and a blue one. All right, let's go ahead and pop the battery out. So you've got to release the screw. Okay, so this is just the door, and the battery pops out, and yeah, good. The screw just does not come out, so you uh, won't lose it. That's good. And yeah, the battery was just kind of sitting here like this, and it can pop out. But there's a JST connector here, 
and one over here on the battery. And that's how you charge it as well. So obviously you're gonna plug that in like so and then close up the door. I don't like the screws so much. I wish uh, something else would be there, but I guess uh, that's the way they designed it. And then you got an on off switch over here. So go ahead, I'll download the app and um, I'll give you some screen recordings. Obviously it's gonna be hard to see what that looks like through the goggles because of the lenses. Um, but I'll give you my impressions on that and we'll drive it around and see what kind of footage we can get. Okay, so before I get into the driving characteristics and the FPV of this car, I do want to let you know that I was not able to get my phone inside the goggles. Um, my phone was just too big to get in here. Uh, so there's a limit to the size of the phone you can use. And I know a lot of the phones these days are kind of on the bigger side, so something to be aware of. So I'm not able to really talk about how this works with a phone because it doesn't work with my phone. Um, but I think I would imagine that if you get your phone in here, the uh, screen will look a lot bigger, be very immersive, like a lot of these sort of VR type headsets. Uh, another thing to note is that in order to get the uh, micro SD card out, you do have to take the uh, shell off. It's on the inside here. Uh, yeah, that's a bit annoying because you have to take four screws out and uh, to get that SD card out to uh, look at the video. But the video quality isn't amazing. Uh, it's like 720p video. The field of view of this camera is fairly narrow, so it just barely covers the front edge of the car. Uh, if When you're just uh, driving the car around uh, line of sight, it's very controllable with the uh, trigger control, of course. I'd recommend uh, reducing the steering uh, dual rate to as low as possible if you're doing FPV, um, because if, if, the, if your rate is too high, it just kind of darts back and forth really quickly uh, and makes it kind of hard to drive FPV. The camera itself, in terms of the video quality, I think it's going to be better geared for more indoor use. Uh, we have more consistent lighting. Uh, I found that I, when you, I use this outdoors, when you go from sun to shade, uh, the video quality really suffered. It's kind of hard to actually uh, drive this in uh, outdoor lighting. So this is definitely going to be better, I think, for indoor lighting or somewhere where you have more, in, more consistent lighting. Um, the camera seems to be geared more towards indoor use, in my opinion. But you know, you know, I'm showing here with you the video footage here, indoors and outdoors, as you've seen here, and it is drivable. Uh, and in both situations, I just find that indoor lighting is a little bit easier. And uh, if you are going to be using the FPV mode, uh, I would recommend reducing your uh, steering dual rate to as low as possible. Line of sight, it doesn't really matter as much. If you want more agility, it'll, you know, it'll dart back and forth or whatever. Um, you know, have as much rate as you want. It's still pretty fast, and so like I actually prefer to fly. I prefer to drive this um, a little bit slower. It just makes the uh, because of the video. There's a little bit of lag in the video. Uh, it just makes it a little bit easier to control, and um, you, and because of the narrow field of view, you can't really see everything that's to the sides. So overall, you know, it's it's workable, but like a lot of like uh, basically these Wi-Fi type uh, cameras, the video quality is pretty, you know, so-so in my opinion, not the best video quality. Now, obviously, I wouldn't like to have seen a more expensive camera in this one, at least a 1080p camera, if not higher, um, and a little bit better dynamic range and a wider field of view. I think then that, especially for FPV, the wide, wider field of view is going to be very helpful in terms of controlling it via FPV. So that's going to do it for this video. If you have any questions, let me know. And I'll talk to you guys in the next one.